What's up, everyone? I have a very special guest today. He is the head promoter for Rocket Combat Sports, which is an MMA promotion based out of Virginia. And he also is a professional mixed martial artist and boxer. Chris the Rocket Rollins joins me today. Chris, welcome back to the program. Always glad to link up with you, my man. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. It was good seeing you last weekend at the fight. Uh, it was turned out to be a good night of fights. I'm glad you could be there to watch it. It was an absolute privilege to be in attendance, and I actually wanted to ask you a boxing question right off the get-go here. Uh, Jake Paul and Mike Tyson, that just got announced. You fought on Jake Paul's undercard before. What's your reaction to this matchup that they're uh, putting together and they're going to run later on this summer? Yeah, well, I, I seen that yesterday. That's pretty much took over the internet yesterday. It's definitely going to make a lot of money. Uh, Jake's he's smart. He's He's killing the game on every aspect of it, especially getting Netflix and all that. I don't know he's doing stuff that's never been done before. So people, a lot of people like to hate and some people love, but you got to respect what he's doing. Uh, any chance we can see you fight on that card? Uh, I think I think I'm going to stick with MMA right now. I I took a little break from MMA. Well, I say no break. I was just boxing for about three years straight, but I was training MMA the whole time, helping my guys get ready for fights and stuff. Um but, you know, if the money's right, I'll, I'll do it. But the judges don't like me in boxing. I've had a couple of close big boxing fights, and they don't like to they don't like to let see the MMA guys win. You pretty much got to go in there and get a finish, but don't let it go to the judges. They say, right? Yep, fair, fair enough, fair enough. Well, let's hit on the card that just happened. It was a really awesome event, Rocket Combat Sports 16. I've been to a few of your fights before. This is probably the favorite, my favorite fight I've been to. It was a really cool venue, and the card was pretty much loaded up from uh, very from the very first fight to the to the main event. What were some of the standout fights in your opinion? Because there's a lot of different ones that you could say. Yeah, like I say, it's still like each fight as we as the fights went on, they got better and better. And then you know, as the skill wise, you know, we try to make it where you know, as the card goes, you you get your top top fighters near the end. But it seems like everyone was. I try to match evenly because it really comes with my shows. I always say, man, the fights are so good. The fights are so good. That's a testament to the fighters. But I try to be fair with the matchups and, you know, don't lie to a guy if he's, you know, has one fight and tell them they don't have much experience and he goes there. Nobody wants to watch a bunch of first-round fights and then go home. I want them to go home and be like, when's the next, when's the next car going to be? And I try to have a rapport with the fighters that, you know, I deal with the same coaches and trainers and, fighters kind of over the course of the last few years i kind of know what i'm dealing with i don't like to mess with the guys that have been known to pull out and you know i take care of them and they take care of me the same aspect because i'm a fighter first not just a promoter so i feel bad when guys miss weight or you know if injuries happen but if you just you know the week before the you know everybody likes the posters and wants to see all the cool stuff but fighting ain't easy and I, uh, I respect everybody that steps in there, but all the fights were great. And honestly, uh, Dominion Raceway, I like that venue. Um, we sold it out. We had to add, we, could, we were able to add like another 80 chairs to the show. I don't think bad about that place, which was just a little bit bigger, but we're going to keep going there because I just like that setup. It's a, it's a good spot. It is a, a very sweet spot. I like the setup. Um, there really isn't a bad seat in that entire place. You walk around, I mean, doesn't matter if you're, in the standing row only or if you're all the way in the back where the dj is like you're gonna get a good spot there and that's yeah. what i really liked about it and the other thing i liked about it there's one fight in there are a couple fights that stood out to me but the uh farah versus vel fight yeah, that, that fight was insane thing. yeah i was like, talking to my partner during that fight i'm like can you believe this is an amateur fight like back in the day i said this is unbelievable is it a uh, uh, high class of a fight that was both of them guys were but two and oh coming in and uh uh probably that was pretty much was a title worthy fight, but pretty much for all be the number one contender now. If he comes back, we'll get him if, he's a hard guy to match, honestly, too. I'll send it you send his name over a lot and a lot of people don't want to take the fight. So and there's not a lot of guys at one twenty five that you know that have a decent record. So as you're an amateur. So it, at that weight class it's 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 hard to match. But I wouldn't be opposed running that fight back with them honestly if they if they, if they are interested in later down the road that was a, that was an awesome fight 
that was probably my favorite fight of the entire night. It was uh, really high level. I don't know how fair I got out of that choke. It looked pretty nasty. It looked like this fight was getting ready to end. And then yeah. he he guts it out. And then he puts on a performance, ends up winning the fight. Congratulations to him. Yeah, he, that was a deep choke in the end of the second. And then he and then he lands a couple of head kicks and he just eats them. So, I mean, both they were just back and forth. Absolutely. Um, there was one fight. The uh, this one kind of sucked. It was Stanley versus Pagundas. It ended in a no contest. You know, bummer situation for both those guys. Is there a possibility we could see this one get run back in the future? Yeah, I'm down to make the fights. If it's all with the coaches and what their managers like. Uh, I've actually trained, cross trained with both of those guys. I was really excited about that fight. Uh, like I said, I've, I've sparred with them a few times at their gyms and stuff. So I was, I knew that was gonna be a good fight. It just didn't get to play out. It was probably what a minute, maybe a minute and a half into the first round, something like that. So we didn't really get to see how it was gonna play out. Yeah, absolutely. I hope we get to see that one back. And then, of course, uh, let's just get right into it. David Wilson uh, in the uh, main event against Mark Guglielmini. That um, Mark Guglielmini, like that dude's a tough dude. Like, I was actually very impressed with him. I'd never heard of him before. I just did the quick tapology scrub before the fight, and I looked, and I was like, okay, this guy seems legit. I understand why they would put this fight together. And uh, really tough dude. He ate a lot of the shots that David threw his way. He wasn't afraid to grapple or wrestle with David Wilson. I was really impressed with this guy, even in defeat. What were your opinions on the main event? Yeah, that main event was a fight of the night. We're going to post some videos of that this week. Um, the Ferrar fight would have been the fight of the night, but I think he missed weight by like a pound. So I don't try not to, if you missed the weight, we can't award you with a, like a fight of the night or performance of the night. Um, yeah, that fight was, was amazing. It was a high level chess match. You know, as you watch some of the amateur fights, they're still good. They're, you know, more brawling, but that was like cage work, clinch work, wrestling, jujitsu, striking them two guys are at a high level. And uh, yeah, I knew Mark's coach been around him for a long time, Rob McCraw from Bauer House. I knew their all their guys are game coming from there, and I've had David on before, so we know what he's bringing to the table coming from a solid gym too. Um, I thought that was a high level fight that you could see on like TV. Honestly, I mean those guys are legit. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you are in the Mid Atlantic area and you're looking for live MMA. Whether you're anywhere in the DMV, anywhere in the Mid Atlantic, check out Rocket Combat Sports. Before we move on to you, I'd be I'd be doing a terrible job as a podcaster if I didn't ask you this question. When can we get a ballpark date for Rocket Combat Sports 17? Is there like a ballpark date uh, that have, you guys are looking at? Yeah, I have August third it's officially locked in, but I'm I'm working on it. I would like to get one before then too. So I can't say that'll be seventeen, but at the latest that would be it. Um Honestly, I want to eventually get my own venue because trying to find venues and book here and everything's booked up is kind of aggravating. And, uh, you know, when you own your own spot, you get all the revenue for the food, alcohol. People see it that, you know, I'm not getting all that. But eventually, that's the that's the end goal. But, uh, yeah, so August 3rd is official. Maybe before then. I'd like to hit maybe May, beginning of June, somewhere in there. Well, hopefully in August, we're talking about RCS 18 and not 17. Yeah, that would be sure. pretty cool. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully I can uh, hit up one of those if that works for me. I am I like going to your fights, man. They're, they're really fun. They're really entertaining. If you're in this area, make sure you check that out. And I'm sure Chris will be back on the program before one of those fights. Let's move on, man. Let's talk specifically about you and let's talk about your 2023. 2023, you had a lot of like ups in the cage, a lot of um performances going your way two fights two stoppages that's great but you also encountered adversity too um and you were had to go away for a little while and i was hoping you could kind of put the pieces of that puzzle together for people who don't know what i'm talking about yeah so last year i was i went two and over two first round finishes i uh, defended my title back in july but in the first i want to say 12 seconds of the fight um i tore my hamstring completely off the bone uh, nobody knew it you know, at the time, but I was just kind of on the ground. I was like, man, this is bad. So I just figured it out and ended up reversing position, come up on top, get the stoppage. I think four minutes, 59 seconds of the first round. If uh, another, it goes another second, I lose the fight. I'm not going to be able to stand up and answer the bell. It's kind of a movie, like something you'd see in a movie, honestly. Um, 
to even cap that off even worse, I buried my grandma that Sunday before the fight. So kind of like everything came down to me at one time. And uh, the rehab was brutal, to be honest. Um, didn't walk for like three months. And I think I had my surgery on August 16th. So it'll be seven months to the day when I come back to fight post-surgery. So I'm pretty uh, proud of that and thankful for all the physical therapists and my all my guys at the gym and the doctor. Plus, you know, just me not giving up. Because to be honest, you know, it's cliche. I don't need to fight no more. This ain't. How they say, I'm not fighting for the money. I'm fighting for because it's in me. And I know the dog is still there. I'm 34 years old. Won four out of my last five, three straight. My one loss coming to Brandon Marat, who's in the UFC now. Got a tough fight coming up March 16th. That's the guys I'm trying to be in there with. That's the guys I'm trying to put on my shows. You know, the mutual respect's there. You know, I don't need to talk no crap. He's not saying nothing. He's a bad dude for... You know, I, I promote and fight, so I know how this game works, top to bottom. He could bring in an easier opponent. He's the local guy. They're bringing in a tough fight. I'm a tough fight for anybody on the regional scene. And uh, so the respect's there. So I'm ready to go over to Morgantown and get the job done, without a doubt, though. And, Chris, um, that was one of the things I, I actually w was thinking about. The Ethan Hayes fight, tough kid. Obviously, it says a lot about him because I was thinking the exact same thing. It's like, okay, this guy's a ticket mover. He could bring in pretty much any guy that's not that great and style on him and look amazing yeah. and send everyone home happy. He's choosing to take the uh, tough path. Were you surprised when these people contacted you and said, hey, like we got an opportunity for you? Like, Did that come out of left field for you? Or is this kind of one of those things where you were expecting to hear from this promotion at one point or another? Uh, kind of caught me off guard, but... Uh... Uh, I think he's cut from the same cloth I'm cut from. So I think he's what 10 and one as a professional fighter, but then the man boxing combined. Uh, so I think he wants, you know, when I look back over my career, it's like people, I have a following, I have a promotion, I've trained with, I've linked up with some high level guys in the UFC. I've made my way. So when they come to, when they fight me, I bring out the best of my opponents, to be honest. So I was like, you watch tape on them, you do this, you do that. When they train for me, they come even harder. But I haven't – I don't even watch tape on my opponents anymore because it's just – I make them – I let my people look at them and stuff, but I don't watch them. When we get in the fight, I've had 45, 46 fights. I ain't never had a fight go like I thought it was going to go. So you put these scenarios in your head of what it's going to play out and what you think is going to happen, and it never does. I just know I'm the best I've ever been right now, and I'm ready to go out there and, and just show it. This um, Hayes kid, we've already talked about him a little bit. We we know he's a stud. We know he's a beast. But and and you've also highlighted on a few things. You talked about his boxing experience, and you know he also has a pretty lengthy amateur career. But you've been in this game for a long time, a long time, like um, almost a decade. And do you feel like this is one of those situations where it's like, yeah, respect to this kid. He's a he's a tough dude, but you're not going to show me anything I haven't seen in almost ten years of fighting. Yeah, um, I think with the thing, you know, he's they say he's good jujitsu. Well, I was fighting legit black belts when I was a white belt, when I didn't have the, the people behind me to say, "Hey, don't take this fight," because I really will fight anybody anytime. Uh, the last guy that submitted me was uh, Joe Selecki. He's in the UFC. He holds the wins over Jim Miller and others. Ever since then, I cross-trained a little bit with my boy Jacob Ashley. He's 3-0 um, as a pro now. He's a jiu-jitsu black belt now. At the at the time we started training, he was. He was a purple belt. But I've been training with him since that day full-time, and ever since then, I've never been submitted in a fight. Um, he's an elite grappler. Uh, I got his striking on par. He got my jiu-jitsu on par. We've just worked with each other for the last eight, nine years. He just came off of uh, – uh, hit kick knockout on uh, Rocket Combat Sport 14 when I defended my belt. It was like 13 seconds into the first round. So I feel like when I'm, I'm in the fire every day with him with his jiu-jitsu, he's long. His guard is nasty. They say my opponent's guard is pretty nasty. So I'm not – you know, I respect, respect what he's bringing to the table, but I'm not scared to go anywhere. Wherever the fight goes, I'm ready to rock. You you beat this guy, Chris. Uh, he's the number one ranked lightweight in West Virginia. You get in there and do what you do. You take that number, then all of a sudden, like 
potentially all different sorts of opportunities would seemingly be open to you. Is that one of the things that kind of motivates you in taking this fight? Because he's a high level guy in this area, and I can understand why a lot of people would want to fight him for that reason. Yeah, 100%. I think he's the number one lightweight on topology, number one pound for pound guy in West Virginia. I'm the number two pound for pound guy in um, Virginia. So after March 16th, so I know, but the rankings will probably come out like on the 18th. I'm going to be the pound for pound number one ranked fighter in West Virginia and Virginia. And I feel like I'm the best pound for pound promoter in Virginia. So that's that's motivating for me. To, that's why I took this fight, to be honest with you. I want to show my kids I've sacrificed a lot. Um, I want to be known as like, hey, at one time I was a pound for pound number one ranked fighter and had a, the top Virginia promotion at the same time because it ain't easy to do both. I mean, to be, and the only thing I, I will say that it, I was not hesitant about taking the fight is promoting my car two weeks before the fight was a lot. Having to deal with all the fighters and everything else that comes along with it, plus train, training my fight, plus running my gym. I definitely stacked my plate full, but hey, when I don't have it, I, I'm like, it feels weird. Like I woke up on Sunday morning, the fight was over last week, and I'm like, crap. It just takes a couple of days to get adjusted to not having your phone blowed up about different questions or whatever. Same with the fight. You're like, why am I doing this again? And then as soon as the fight's over, you're like, I got to go back. And it's kind of, it's, it's crazy, but it's, it's, it's a weird feeling. One of the things I wanted to ask you a little bit, like for people who haven't seen you fight, right? Because there might be some people that are maybe a little bit late on the scene or just trying or just new to MMA. What can they expect if they're going to be showing up at, in attendance or buying your pay-per-view to watch you perform? For anyone that's new to you, can you kind of describe uh, for them or preview for them what sort of uh, fight they're about to see on March 16th? Yeah, I've tried to pride myself over over the years. I've never missed weight, never pulled out of a fight in my whole from amateurs all the way through pro. I always pushing for the finish, and I come in shape, ready to rock. Um, there's no, I don't think I've ever been in a boring fight, and this would be my 13th state fighting as a professional. Uh, been on some top shows, been on some bad shows, and that's made me as a better fighter, made me a better promoter. I've learned from everybody as far as, you know, what to do and what not to do. But um, I look forward to, you know, people are like, you're 34, you don't need to be fighting no more, thinking I'm old. I'm like, to be honest, you know, when I get locked in that cage and he's got hundreds of people there for him, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable and uncomfortable. I've been done this over and over. And the guys, you dig into my record, uh, the judges don't like me. It's whatever, but I know in my heart, you know, what's done is done. But I'm like 12 and 6 as a pro. And the guys I've lost to is multiple UFC guys right now, Bellator. I didn't see the highest level of my boxing. Uh, the guys that have beat me, I don't I don't want to misquote, but their records is like 50, 60, something, like one or two losses. Uh, you got to be the real deal to beat me. So I'm coming in to take him out. He's coming to take me out. You know, it's respect at the end of the day, but I don't, I don't do all the touching gloves and hugging and good luck talk before the fight. I'm, I'm there to get the job done. He's doing the same. If uh, if he takes me out, he's a bad man, but I'm March 16th, I'm going to get my hand raised by any means necessary. Before I let you go, I wanted to ask you a quick MMA question. We got Dustin Poirier fighting later on tonight. He go, He's going up against a young French stud, Benoit Saint-Denis, and you know who Dustin Poirier is, just like me. You've been watching this guy fight for the past 12 plus years easily. And when you look at this, like, do you think that people are sleeping on him? Do you think people have like forgotten about Dustin Poirier? Because as crazy as it sounds, I checked my phone and I looked at the gambling odds and people are saying that Dustin Poirier is an underdog. And I thought that was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. So I bet Dustin Poirier is an underdog. I'm just kind of curious, not so much from a betting standpoint, but more about like his body of work and what it is that he's done. Are people sleeping on him? And do you think he's going to win tonight? Yeah, I, I definitely think they're sleeping on him. I've seen the odds too. I was gonna, I'm going to bet on that today myself. I've actually been to, I think what three of Dustin's fights, in the UFC and uh, met him a few times and we DM once in a while you know we were not like tight buddies but we have we've, we've met each other uh what he like I like what he said he's but he's 35 years old he's you know he said he wants to look in that mirror to, he knows he still has a dog there but this was like you know people was like this ain't like a big name for like a casual fan but the people in the MMA world know how tough this guy is and I think he's motivated for that and it's a five-round fight I definitely think he'll get his hand raised tonight. And I mean, he's never lost back-to-back -back fights in his career. 
he, he, he'll take a little sip back and he bounces right back. I think he says he's Mr. Bounce Back. So uh, I think he's going to come in there with a chip on the shoulder. Plus, he trains in Florida. A lot of fans are going to be there. I think it's going to be a good fight, but I think he, uh, I think he's going to make some money tonight. That's the, that's the fight to make your money on tonight. I think he sparks this dude in, in the fourth yeah. round with that yeah, left. Great shape. I seen the weigh-ins last night after I got done training. Uh, I'm excited for this card tonight. Honestly, it's gonna be a good good night of fights. I think it's better than the UFC 300 card. Personally, I, I look at it, I'm like, oh my god! Like this fight, this fight card is freaking stacked from top to Dang. bottom. Absolutely. Well, Chris, I appreciate your time this morning. You're the man. I love your promotion. I love watching you fight. You're an exciting bad dude. Um, before I let you go, who do we need to uh, thank? Who are your sponsors and uh, who are your uh, training partners that we need to shout out? Yeah, I just want to thank you for always promoting just MMA in general, especially in this area, bringing on fighters, giving them a platform. Um, I'm trying to do that for the guys, you know, not just Virginia fighters, but just the local guys, you know, to, to get you. If you're good, you can win these fights that I've told you before, but I never had like a platform to fight, so I'd have to take the fight on a week or two years to go fight the local the local guy and, and uh, i would always step in and take the fights but i want to give a platform these guys to build and then you know go on to something bigger and better eventually um I'd like to give a shout out to like my my boy brian thomas we've been training together forever he's actually one of the owners with me and him I own rocket combat sports together and jake mclean um i've pretty much been with them for over 10 years now it's pretty cool to look back and see that you know, they've been in my corner helping me fight and then uh, in the midst of me fighting, I didn't realize I made a brand of myself, you know, and then Rocket Combat Sport comes and it's like it's crazy to look back at. I never had any visions of ever doing that. It just kind of happened by not giving up and just keep on training. Um, and full-time fight where I started that at the end of last year. I got this on here. I'm going to start sponsoring some fighters. We got gear, all kinds of stuff, hats, shirts, gloves, all that stuff. So I'm going to start reaching out to a few fighters, sponsoring them and growing that bigger. And, uh, yeah, I just appreciate everybody stuck with me over the years. It's always just up and down, but one thing I've never gave up. And uh, like I said, when you asked me earlier, people know when I step in the cage, I'm going to give 100% effort. I ain't taking – because there's always – not every fight, but there's a – a lot of your fights, there's going to be a, little, a small window where you can take the easy way out if you want. You can roll over and give them your back and lay down. I'll never take the easy way out. My corners know that, and maybe – as you get older in life, that's not the smartest way to be. That's the way I'm going to be. I'm not going to half-ass anything. So when I go in there, I'm not taking the easy way out. You got to come take me all the way out. I'm going to take you out. And I think that's what the fans want to see. And that's what I'm going to do March 16th. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, we can't follow that up with anything. Make sure you tune in. And, Chris, I appreciate your time. I look forward to having you back really soon, my friend. All right. I appreciate you, man. Have a good day. Thank you.